Hi guys and welcome to Total Technic. In today's video we're going to be having a look at the BCY which is the Audi RS6 C5 engine. This is the 4.2 twin turbo. Uh, what we've done is we've removed this engine and uh, we've actually done a full engine removal video uh, for the Audi RS6. We'll put a link to that uh, below this video on YouTube. Go down make sure you check that out. Uh, if you're intending on getting the engine or the gearbox out of your RS6 that video is an absolute must. we are sure you'll find it more than helpful. Uh, what we're going to do now, I've got the engine out, I'm just going to give you a little kind of a bit of a guided tour. And this might be really useful for you if you're kind of, uh, you know, lying on your back, kind of working up underneath the car, trying to work out where the different kind of components are located. Sometimes it can be useful to kind of see how the engine's kind of laid out and what it is you're trying to kind of attack when you're upside down to kind of see it a little bit more clearly when the engine's actually out. So we'll have a little look around the engine, uh, all, you know, all four sides of it and um, kind of we'll point out some of the main bits and hopefully if you're doing some work on your own Audi RS6 uh, this will be really useful for you as a bit of a reference tool. Uh, so let's take a look. So we'll start with the simplest kind of view which is the, the view from the top here. Obviously this is something you can see um, or at least some of it uh, when the airbox is out of the way uh, when you're looking with the engine uh, is still in the car. Uh, I'm going to give you a few kind of pointers and as we kind of go around the different areas uh, hopefully this will kind of tie in and, and kind of all make a little bit of sense. So the rear of the engine is the uh, the side that's kind of uh, closest to the bottom of the camera here. Uh, that's the rear side of the engine and this is the front of the engine uh, here. Uh, so obviously this bit you'll be kind of familiar with. As we go to the back uh, we've got the two um, air intakes at the back there. Uh, that's where your um, airbox sits. So on top of those, you've got your uh, your ma mass airflow sensors, your MAFs, uh, which go into your airbox, and obviously you've got that massive airbox that sits on the entirety of the uh, the top of these engines with the two air filters in it uh, and various kind of um, intake pipe work that comes out uh, into the kind of the top of the uh, the slam panel area as well. Uh, obviously on e either side, as uh, a V8, so you've got four. Um, uh, we've removed the coil packs. Uh, these are where the uh, this is where the coil packs normally sit, four on each side as it's a V8 engine, and um, obviously below these uh, we've got our, our paper in just to protect this at the moment. Uh, but in these little holes there is located the uh, the spark plugs. Uh, these are your rocker covers. Um, they're not too bad on the RS6, uh, but you can sometimes get a, an oil leak from your rocker cover gaskets. Uh, if you get kind of a, a trickle of oil leaking down the, the side of the engine, uh, that's uh, quite a common place on, on uh, lots of models of Audis. Like I said, the, the RS6 isn't too bad for this, uh, but the rocker cover gaskets basically sit under the, the uh, rocker covers there. Um, and if you look, there is actually uh, you know that, that piece of rubber that's sandwiched between uh, these two pieces here. You can just about see it there. Uh, that's the gasket there. Um, so if you do get a, you know, like I said, a, a, an engine uh, oil leak and it looks like it's kind of coming from the top side of the engine, check that out first because that's a, a, a likely candidate as well. Um, here, uh, again on the front of the engine, these plastic covers, we'll show you these better from the front in a minute, uh, but these are the uh, the covers um, for the uh, cam belt, uh, or if your cam belt and gubbins and everything is down below these uh, covers, and again we've got one on, on either side as well. Uh, so that's kind of um, the, the basic layout. Uh, let's have a look around the, the kind of the sides and the back and the front, uh, where we can kind of get into a, a bit more of the meaty stuff. So here we are looking at the uh, the back side of the engine. This is the, uh, the side of the engine that's um, kind of hidden away under the bulkhead where the gearbox connects to the uh, the back of the engine here. Um, so as, as we said before, uh, there's the uh, the air intakes. You can see those there. And those would lead down into your turbos. We've actually re removed the turbos from, uh, from this car already. Uh, but sat on the end of these and bolted around the side there is uh, normally is the uh, the turbos. So that's where they, uh, that's where they sit uh, on this particular car. Uh, down below that, uh, this is the section here that actually uh, connects to the torque converter. You see, you've got um, two sets of, uh, so you've got three, three sets of two bolts uh, around the outside. And what they do is you actually uh, bolt the uh, the torque converter bolts in from the back uh, in this manner, you know, back to front as it were. And that's where the, the torque converter is literally uh, bolted bolted onto this, uh, which will part the crank here. Uh, so obviously that turns and in turn turns the uh, torque converter. Uh, uh, which the gearbox uses to obviously transfer the power. Uh, now the other thing that we have is uh, just next to this, is, that's quite a, a useful thing to know, this is where your um, starter motor sits. So your starter motor normally sits, uh, we'll have a quick look at it from the side in, in a minute, but actually sits and it has um, a little cog on the front um, obviously and the starter motor, the cogs uh, sit on the um, 
in this groove here. Obviously, when you start the motor, that will that will start this and allow it to uh, to turn. Uh, but that's the kind of notable thing. It does actually have a, a cutout uh, down in this section uh, where the um, a starter motor kind of pokes its head in if you like and uh, attaches to these and also uh, as you'll see in our, our full video that we've done for disconnecting the um, engine and gearbox that's another video we've done for the RS6 uh, we'll add a link for that as well for you um, but th this is also how you disconnect these bolts uh, you, have, you have to turn it to line it up to this hole once the starter motor is out of the way it's quite a lot of work to do actually to disconnect the engine and, and the gearbox uh, but that's some of the uh, kind of main main points. Obviously, got various uh, uh, oil pipes and things around the back there. Uh, but don't want to get into uh, too much nitty gritty. Otherwise, we'll be be here all day. So let's move on to the next side. Okay, so focusing a little bit more down on uh, this side of the engine, uh, which is as you look into the engine bay, is the uh, the left hand side. It's actually, technically, the right hand side if you if you sat in the driver's seat looking out. If that makes any sense. So on this side, uh, obviously the, the thing that's probably uh, jumping out to you is the uh, oil filter. Uh, when we did um, we did a guided tour of the uh, engine in situ a little while back, I don't know if you guys remember that, uh, but explaining to you that the um, that the oil filter is not kind of at the top rear uh, where it is on most Audi models, it's actually down on the side, and um, you have to get it get to it through the kind of wheel arch. Uh, so it's obviously a little bit trickier than most uh, oil filters are to replace uh, but that is the location of that oil filter right there. Uh, we've removed the, uh, the manifold, uh, so you've still got the manifold gasket down in there uh, but that's where your manifold sits, your manifold uh, bolts onto there, uh, comes off towards the front, attaches to your, to your down pipes as well. So that's where the manifold would normally sit, that's bolted onto there. And below that, where you see that kind of big gap, that is where that wee beastie normally lives, which is the uh, starter motor that I mentioned uh, earlier. If you look in the uh, the uh, in the head of the starter motor just there, like you can see the uh, the little cog that I mentioned before. And as I said before, that cog actually um, uh, locks in there, and uh, that's obviously what um, when you when you provide the starter motor with power, uh, that'll kick that off and, and get that going. And uh, that's kind of the the basics of of how that works. Um, and that's most of the exciting stuff uh, on this side, so let's have a look at the other side. So coming down to the opposite side of the engine, uh, a few kind of um, obvious things that stand out. I've got this big uh, this bracket, big bracket bang in the middle here, and uh, this is where the um, engine mount sits. The engine mount sits uh, underneath there, bolts in through the, uh, through the top. And there's a bracket in the car and it bolts on through the bottom there. That's the, uh, that's the engine mount bracket. Uh, just here you've got your um, this is your aircon uh, pump uh, as you can see quite a quite a meaty one on, on this particular car um, so, so that's where that's located for you as well and we also have uh, normally your kind of a turbo uh, again would be over in in this section uh, but we have uh, already removed that and we have the uh, that's where your manifold uh, would normally sit again we have removed that for the sake of this video uh, but you have your manifold coming off of here, uh, attaching to your um, uh, turbos and downpipes and things of that nature. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, we're going to have a, a quick look at the uh, the front of the engine here in a little bit more detail in just a second. Uh, just one thing to uh, to point out before we, we get stuck in is uh, we've removed the uh, the alternator uh, from this car, which kind of sits down in this little gap down in here, and is run off of the uh, off, off of the uh, auxiliary system here as well. Um, so obviously that's where your alternator would would normally sit. Uh, down in this gap uh, down here, it's held on with a, a couple of uh, big bolts uh, down there. Um, so bear that in mind that we have removed that um, just whilst we give you the overview of the rest of the components. Okay, quick peek on the, uh, the front of the engine. So this is literally the, uh, you know, the what, what pokes out of the uh, of the bumper, if you like. So the bumper literally is on here. You've got your um, radiator and everything almost directly in front of this with a very, very small gap. So when you peer down and you see the belts moving uh, between the uh, um, engine and the radiators, this is exactly what you'll be what you'll be looking at here. Now the uh, the ones you can see here, that all these um, uh, pulleys and stuff we've got dotted around here. Uh, these are uh, nothing to do with the uh, the cam belt. I'll show you that in a second. Um, these are for this is the uh, auxiliary drive belt that actually feeds around these. So that feeds your uh, alternator and your um, aircon system and things of that nature uh, as well. And and your uh, main crank uh, is this is this one here. 
Uh, again, you have to manipulate that to uh, separate the uh, the engine and the gearbox, as we'll, as uh, as I said, as we show in in that video in more detail. Uh, so that's the main that's your main crank there, and everything else is kind of the uh, auxiliary stuff, if you like. Uh, I'll show you the uh, the cam belt uh, in a second. They're hidden away under these covers. Uh, you've got your throttle body um, here as well. That's can controls the air intake into the into the engine so that opens and closes uh, as it's required to do so as you come uh, on and on and off the uh, the throttle uh, but I'll pop one of these covers off for you and you can kind of uh, have, a, have a quick peek at the uh, at the cam belt there as well so there we go so, so that's your that's your cam belt in here and obviously that follows around we've got another one on the uh, on the opposite side as well and that kind of uh, follows around uh, a series of pulleys as well um, quite a lot of work involved uh, on the cam belt change on, on the RS6 it's not as simple as it is on many other uh, Audi models uh, but nothing nothing too terrible uh, but it is quite involved and obviously you do need specialist tools it has to be done uh, properly or has to be locked up properly with the special with the, the proper tools etc uh, so you've got kind of got to know what you're doing uh, if you're going to kind of get into cam belts. But chances are, if you're looking at doing that, then you, you probably do anyway. So, uh, like I said, guys, that's um, just kind of a, a basic overview of the location of kind of some of the uh, the key components that are dotted around the engine. Hopefully, if you're doing some work on your engine, uh, you're laying on your back, uh, your car jacked up in the air, uh, struggling to kind of work out where things are, how, where things might be attached. Uh, hopefully, this will be a good reference for you. Uh, like I say, if you, if you really want to get into this, we have done the, the full engine uh, removal and the engine and gearbox separation videos uh, as well. We'll add the links for you below those, uh, below this video on YouTube. Um, so if you're kind of into this stuff or you plan on doing any of that work yourself, uh, you really do want to check that, that kind of video out before you kind of dive into this. This is quite, quite, quite a complex little, uh, little beastie, the, the Audi RS6. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, if you're a car geek, I'm sure you're, uh, you're geeking out over it. Uh, kind, of like it kind of like we do. We find it quite interesting, so we thought we'd share it with you. So I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.